Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so glad I'm bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now then, let's call for that daily bread before going to the broadcast. I've got wonderful things to share with you today. Join me right now as we declare, say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now then, Yesterday I was sharing with you, now we're still talking about how to use the Bible. Yesterday I was talking to you about how you meditate on the Word of God and how you allow it to influence your life and your decision. So I was telling you yesterday that after you have, you know, meditated on the Word and come to a conclusion, hear me, hear me. If your meditation doesn't conclude, doesn't get to a place of conclusion, you haven't meditated yet. You don't let your thoughts to just be an open-end thought. Now, how, how do you mean your meditation should come to a place of conclusion? It must come to that place where you decide in your mind that based on this truth, this is what I have chosen to walk in or I have chosen to believe. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, so you meditating on the world like I was sharing with you yesterday, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And then you begin to think about who a shepherd is, what a shepherd does to the sheep, right? Because if you say the Lord is my shepherd, then you're saying I am a sheep, right? Okay, so what does he do to the sheep? How, 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 how does he take care of the sheep? Now, when you are done, and then you now look at yourself, and then you tell yourself, you know what? You know, last week, Thursday, I was sharing with them fellowship. And you know, Jesus made some profound statements. He says, take no thought for your life. And then he now said something. He says, consider the sparrows. Now, when he said consider the sparrows, it's part of meditation. Consider the sparrows. He said consider, meaning think deeply about the sparrows, how they live. He said they don't sow, they don't reap. Yet, and that's the most amazing part, or one can say the most annoying part, <laughs> understand this. And Jesus said, your heavenly father feeds them. My father, yes, feeds the sparrow. Yes. I've never seen a sparrow go hungry. Yes. I've never seen a sparrow die because, lack for lack of food. No, I haven't. And then it says, it is my heavenly father that is responsible for all those birds that I see. My heavenly father is responsible. He didn't say nature is responsible. He said, your heavenly father. That's why I said that's the annoying part. He said, your heavenly father is the one responsible for their feeding. <laughs> and then I'm here hungry. I'm here drinking Gary, you know, like you say over here in Africa, in Nigeria. I'm here suffering. My heavenly father sees to it that the sparrows are well fed. They are doing well. They never lack food. And then I'm here hungry. Now, what, what's all that thought doing? You're meditating on God's word. But you see, having done that, you must get yourself to the place of conclusion. But what is that? You know what? I will never struggle again. Never. Why won't you struggle? Hey, have you looked at the birds? <laughs> and it's my father that's taking care of them. My father is responsible for them. Have you looked at the birds? Like, I refuse to struggle. Never, never, never. I refuse to struggle. Now, what have you done? You have come to the place of decision based on your meditation. Now, you see that statement you just made, right? I refuse to struggle. Here's how it works. The next time you are faced with a situation and then you find yourself struggling, sometimes you may even start struggling. And then that word will hit you. Now, that's the Holy Spirit now. That word will hit you. I thought you said you refused to struggle. And then you go, yeah, 
So what am I doing now? I'm struggling. Ah, 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 ah. Now I said something yesterday. Now when you get to that place of conclusion, I was going to say something yesterday. When you get to that place of conclusion, the next thing, very important, and this is where many people miss it. You must do. Take that decision you have made now to the Lord. You see, you got an information from the Bible, right? And you believed the information. Now, that's what the Bible was meant for, for us to believe. It helps us believe. And understand this, that believing is from your mind. It is with your mind that you believe. You decide to believe. You don't wake up and realize, oh, I actually believe that thing. No, you make up your mind. Say, this thing I just heard, I believe it. Now, if you're intelligent, of course, you know there are pillars to aid your believing. It doesn't mean you believe everything. But you see, you see certain facts that are like, ah, if this is there, this is there, this is there, then I believe it. it I believe this thing is true. But the good thing about the Bible, that's why I say it's a book of truth. Every information there is truth. It is truth. You have to believe that one. <laughs> Praise God. It is true. Oh, Pastor Joe, were you there when they were writing it? <laughs> no, it's not about the people that wrote it. It's about the experience, the people that have the experience. Every experience you read in there is true. There are historical experiences. You can find out. Praise God. Yes, there are records that are there. There are, there are, there are informations available. No one has come up to dispute the fact that the Bible is, is, is a book of truth. No one has done so successfully. So what they try to do, they say there are, there are some uh, errors in the Bible. Where are the errors? They lack understanding. Praise God. Yeah. Because, because you see, I, I don't know. Where are the errors? Now, when you have finished, because this is a book of truth, and then you've spent time thinking and meditating on it, and then you have made your decision. That decision you have made, you take it to the Lord and kneel before him and say, Father, I just realize that you feed the sparrows. And Lord, you are my shepherd. Now you're born again, now, of course. The day... I made Jesus the Lord of my life. You became my father and you became my shepherd. So Lord, from today, I have made up my mind. I'm not going to struggle again. Now, why do I say you must bring it to the Lord? I'll tell you why. I told you something yesterday. The word in itself does not work the miracles. That is the mistake a lot of believers make. You think the word itself will, will do the miracle. No. 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 You see, when David was declaring the Lord is my shepherd, he was speaking for himself. He wasn't speaking for you. He was making his own declaration. He was making, he was saying that now, now David was not reading from anywhere. That, you see, that's the thing. David was not reading a book. David was not reading a Bible. That it was written, the Lord is my shepherd. No, that when he made that declaration, it was the conclusion of his own meditation. He's thought about the God that he's come to know and his dealings with God. And then he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That was the conclusion. What you read about in the Bible in Psalm 23 was the conclusion of somebody's meditation. See that? Now that's why I say when you are done meditating, you must make a statement. You must make a decision. And see, that's your decision. Learn this. Either you write it down or you confess it. Now, when I say confess it, not just confess it for today, now for today, and tomorrow you cannot remember what you confess. When I say confess it, I'm not saying talk it. You know, you know, you see, there's a difference between confession and talking. Now, many people talk and thinking they are confessing. Confession is bringing the inner you out. That's what confession is. 
It's not every talk that is confessed. See, so if I say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. One who doesn't understand will say he's confessing Psalm 23. No, he's not confessing Psalm 23. He is speaking Psalm 23. That's what he's doing. He is speaking Psalm 23. He's not confessing Psalm 23. It becomes a confession when it has become your own personal truth. See that now? So when David was declaring Psalm 23 and writing it down, because he wrote it down. When he was writing it down, now this is why as a child of God you must have, you must write. You must write. You must write. Because see, it's one thing to speak. It's another thing to document. Now I remember one day the Lord spoke to me and said, son, because I used to write a lot. I've got diaries and, and, and books. And the Lord said something to me one day. He said, do you know? Yeah, I've shared that with you. The Lord said to me, do you know these your diaries are more potent to you than the Bible? Now, I've never heard that from anywhere before. Praise God. Now I know some of you say, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say anything? Listen, listen, listen. I'm making progress with my life. And I'm making progress by the things I learned from the Spirit of God. So the Lord said to me, He said, The things you have written, they are to you. They are more potent to you than the Bible itself. Now, I would, I would lie to you. When I heard those words, you know how you, you hear something and you just feel, okay, eh, Satan, I think you're, you're, you're trying to exalt, you're trying to bring that, you're trying to make me exalt myself. That was the first thought that came to me. But ex examining the word, I knew, no, this is not the devil. This is the Lord speaking to me. So I began to pay attention to, to what he was saying. I said, Lord, talk to me about that. So he said, Everything, for example, the book of Psalms, those were David's words that he received from his dealings with me. So now when you begin to deal with me and by our dealing, you are beginning to document statements and things that you have learned from me. He said to me, he says, son, when you pray, you can as well quote it and say, it is written. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. It is written. Say, devil, come here, come here, come here, come here. Can you see this? Can you see this? Now, why would the devil fear that? Oh, he's going to fear it. it. Because, you see, no, it's only the Bible that we can say it is written. Uh -uh. The reason we say it is written concerning the Bible is because those people have dealings with God. Now, this one, you, you, you are having dealings with the Lord. And, and now you're dealing, you're confronting life situation. Hey, bragi da zapata. Hey, it is written. This is what the Lord told me 5 a.m., 1999. You understand what I'm talking about? It is more potent than anything. Powerful. When we say the word of God is sharp and active, when you say the word of God is quick and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, brothers and sisters, you don't realize that it is that word that came to you. Now you're beginning to understand God for yourself. You know him. Not because you're just quoting scriptures. See, and so I said, you take it to the Lord in prayer and then you make a commitment to the Lord. Why? Because it is the Lord that will stand over his word that you have meditated on, that you have concluded on. He is the one that will now watch over that word and bring it to pass. See how it works? Many times we just confess, we just declare. 
And we keep declaring and keep declaring no power behind it because the power is not in it itself. The power is in the person. Ah. My time is up. I pray for you right now that the Spirit of God will truly carry you and make the Bible useful to you and bring you to the same place of experience with it. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.